morning, Atlantis. And to let you know, Bonnie Ron helped with the wake-up music this morning. Good morning, Dan. Uh, you're loud and clear, and I think uh, we're going to be reluctant to say hello, but uh, I guess we'll be ready when the time comes. While this work uh, continues in the Space Lab Science Module, the entry team of flight controllers led by Entry Flight Director Wayne Hale has been uh, on console since about uh, 2 o'clock this morning as they uh, cycle themselves into the same shift they'll work tomorrow in support of all the preparations required for Atlantis's deorbit burn and return uh, to the Kennedy Space Center. Entry Flight Director Wayne Hale has already had one weather briefing from the Spaceflight Meteorology Group this morning. He's expecting a, a more detailed uh, weather briefing uh, from those forecasters about a half an hour from now as he continues to uh, formulate his strategy and that uh, of the entry team uh, to present to the mission management team of top NASA managers and their meeting about two hours from now. And uh, Space Lab Houston, uh, for Bonnie to relay to Norm, we just need to know how much he uh, intakes prior to LBNP. Yeah, we understood that uh, question. He just reported to me it's uh, 250 ml grape with artificial sweetener. Copy, 250 ml. Uh, correction, it's uh, 200 ml. 200 ml. That's permanent. Space Lab Houston, Park for Ellen. Uh, LBNP advises just to go ahead and proceed. They did get your question, and uh, we'll have words for you momentarily. This looks like there was a disconnect between who did the cue card and the logbooks and who did the programming and the controller. I copy that. And I'm curious to know which one is the one that we intended to really run. All right. Uh, let me start with a big picture question, Commander Gibson. Part of this mission was to go up and get Norm Saggard and to do some long-term experiments about long-term space stays. But the other part of it was to prove it could be done technically, to prove it could be done politically, that we could work with the Russians. Put those on a balance and tell me which was the most important part of this flight. Nancy, I 
guess it's hard to say that one was more important than the other because they all had their very specific purposes. Uh, you, you, you mentioned that it was done to show that it could be done. I think we really integrated it more into a, a long-term picture than just to go show that it could be done. Uh, we are all interested in building International Space Station and working together and making that work, and this is one of the first steps on the way. Uh, we have divided it up to call what we call Phase 1 and then leading into Phase 2. Phase 1 is the flights to Mir, and those are doing many of the projects, many of the techniques, many of the tests that we'll be doing in Phase 2. So this is just one small part of the, of the whole overall picture. Uh, again, Commander Gibson, Norm Thagard has been pretty open about saying that this is likely to be his last flight. I'm wondering about you. How likely are you to fly again, and what is it that NASA could offer you after you have done what you have said is pretty much the piloting challenge of a lifetime? Well, Nancy, I guess I have to admit that's a pretty good question, and I've, I've been wondering to myself, well, gee, what am, what am I going to do after this one? Uh, how, you know, if I, I don't know that I need to top this one, but uh, how am I going to get a more interesting and more challenging flight in the future after this? And the answer is, I, I guess I don't know. Uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, where I move to next or what... Uh, what I do within NASA, I, I think I've learned quite a few things that would be very useful and very valuable to NASA. Uh, maybe this is the last time I fly. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm keeping an open mind and I'm keeping all the options open uh, still at this point, Nancy. Let me ask Greg Harbaugh a question. You've had the chance to talk with uh, Norm Thagard, and he has said that three months in space is doable, but that six months or a year is in his mind, pretty difficult thing to do. I'm just wondering, would you be interested in a long-term stay? And what is it that you have, what is your reaction to what Norm Thagard has had to say? Has that discouraged you in any way from wanting to make a long stay yourself? Well, Nancy, I don't know that I'm a candidate for that kind of a, a flight. I think having a, a medical doctor uh, do that kind of long-duration activity uh, to do the, uh, the self-analysis, self-diagnosis that uh, would be most useful from a scientific return standpoint would be uh, probably the optimum. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, in answer to your question, I'm not sure that I have the mindset to uh, go stay someplace for three to six or 12 months if I wasn't going somewhere. I think maybe if we were on our way to Mars, I'd be very interested. But uh, uh, going up and staying on space station, I don't know. Uh, but I haven't been confronted with that question, uh, and I, I guess I'll beg off until uh, somebody asks me whether I really want to do it uh, and, and can put me in that position. Well, let me ask Commander Deseroff the question then. He spent three months uh, aboard Mir. Tell me what it is about your character, your personality, that makes you able to stay for long terms in space. And would you be interested in six months, a year, or maybe even the length of time it would take to go to Mars? What would make you able to do that personally? Позвольте мне задать вопрос командиру Дежурову. Вы провели на борту станции более трех месяцев. Пожалуйста, расскажите о себе, о чертах своего характера. Что позволяет вам выдерживать такое длительное пребывание на станции? И были ли бы вы заинтересованы в длительных полетах, шестимесячных или годичных? Well, actually, the longer the flight, the more uh, a person uh, becomes more intense in all of his aspects, in the, in the good and kind of the not so good. Uh, to uh, make uh, long flights on existing and new, new stations uh, and stations that are, are working on a more contemporary level uh, and are more uh, technologically advanced are, is, is certainly interesting and I would with great pleasure would agree to uh, do this if uh, I have the opportunity to fly to uh, the new Alpha Station. I think this would be very interesting to uh, try and uh, how this would be. It would uh, be even more interesting if 
there would be a big international uh, team that uh, consists not only of Americans and Russian cosmonauts and astronauts, but also astronauts and cosmonauts from other countries. Commander Dejerov, Dom Saggart has said he got lonely up there. Did you get lonely up there? А командир дежуров Норм Тагард сказал, что ему было одиноко на борту станции. Вам было одиноко? No, no, I wasn't lonely. Actually, there was a lot of work to do, and there wasn't uh, even time to think about missing anything. Well, Norm was uh, somewhat lonely, I, but I wouldn't say very lonely. And uh, he was so uh, uh, loaded down with work the same way that we were with uh, all sorts of technical issues. Norm wasn't uh, loaded down uh, so much that we, uh, we were a little late in accepting a new model module with new equipment. Let me uh, not leave uh, Charlie Precord out of this. You know, always there are detractors um, to the space program. It comes up every year for a vote. It's going to be, uh, the space station is going to be coming up again in Congress. Undoubtedly, there will be those who try to kill it. Are there people that you just have to write off who are always going to do this? Or after a mission that's been given this much international publicity and, and talked about this much in terms of success, do you find it frustrating that you have to fight these battles over and over again? Well, I look at it from two respects. I think uh, it's good that there's some skeptics out there to keep us honest and make sure that we produce the maximum product for the dollar that's spent on the program. On the other hand, there is a little bit of frustration that uh, if you work in something like this like we do, it's our life, and we are very, very dedicated to it. We believe in it completely. And it's somewhat frustrating that we can't uh, communicate how important it is uh, to those people who doubt it. Um, and I guess it kind of falls back to your earlier question to Hoot about what was the most important part of the flight, whether it be political or technical. I think uh, what really goes on here is that there's a little bit of everything uh, for everybody in what we're doing in space, whether it be research, whether it be international relationships, whether it be new technologies for uh, everyday life on Earth, whether it be for motivating our children, whether it be for education. You can look for all different directions, and what we do impacts every different area of our lives. So, yes, there is some frustration, but uh, it keeps us honest, and I think it's healthy, and, and that's our process. That's uh, what's made our country strong. And now I think that same process will make uh, our entire globe strong internationally as we join together. Um, one of the biggest results, I think, of this flight is that we've demonstrated a willingness, both sides uh, and now internationally, to, uh, to carry on with this kind of project, and it's really encouraging. Well, that brings to mind something that Greg Harbaugh said before he left, which is that uh, I remember asking him about uh, something, what he thought would come of this. And, and uh, Greg, you said that 20 years ago uh, there was uh, a lot of hope after Apollo Soyuz, but the danger now is of sitting back and not committing ourselves, the same thing that happened 20 years ago. If it were up to you, what would you do right this minute, right now, or as soon as you got back on the ground to keep this going, to keep this interest gen generated? Uh, what would I do personally, you mean, Nancy? Uh, or what would you tell NASA to do, and what would you do personally? Uh, well, I think we've done what, what uh, we can do on a personal level. Uh, we've uh, accomplished our mission. You know, we uh, set out for a very, with a very challenging set of objectives, and uh, we satisfied those, and I think we did it uh, very well. Uh, with regard to NASA, um, you know, I, I think uh, we could, we need to do a good job of telling the American people um, what what we do and why we do it, and uh, to uh, to follow up on Charlie's point, to let folks know why it is a, a worthwhile penny on the tax dollar that the taxpayer spends uh, that uh, pays for our budget. Uh, you know, we, we do an awful lot. If you look back and, and created some sort of an anthology of what we've done just in the shuttle program with all of the satellite uh, deploys and retrieves and, and some of the amazing, fantastic things we've done with just the space shuttle, uh, it's, it's really
really quite an impressive list of accomplishments. And uh, I think the American public needs to have that kept in front of them so that they appreciate what uh, the space program is really doing for them. And I guess I would try to be aggressive at getting that word out. Okay, I think I lost the uh, the end of the answer to that question, but let me go ahead and, and uh, ask one one more of uh, Commander Dezeroff, if he can can hear me, which is, uh, what is the thing that he is looking forward, the real human thing that he is looking forward to doing the most when he gets back? Does he want to take a walk in the woods? Does he want to take a hot shower? What is the first real human thing, after seeing his family, that he wants to do when he gets home? Uh, у нас был перерыв связи, и по конец вашего ответа не был слышен. Позвольте мне задать вам другой вопрос. Uh, что вы хотите сделать uh, после того, как вы uh, приземлитесь и встретитесь со своей землей? Что бы вам хотелось сделать uh, первым? Uh, ну, например, uh, принять горячий душ, uh, погулять по лесу, вот uh, такого рода. Yeah. The very first thing I would probably want to do is to uh, stand under a hot shower for a pretty long time, and I'd miss that. And second thing, with uh, I'd like to meet with my family, with uh, my kids, my wife, to, to talk, to socialize, take a little walk, uh, if there is such an opportunity, immediately. And to tell you the truth, I'm, uh, I, I miss... Um, I miss people pretty much and uh, kind of the everyday earth life. One last real quick question for Hoot. It's 20 years since Apollo saw you. 20 years from now, what do you want people to say about this mission? Nancy, I hope they'll say it was, it was a very good success. I hope they'll say that it uh, had been an incredibly long dry spell between Apollo Soyuz and SCS-71, but then look at all the other missions that we did, and look at how SCS-71 helped open the way between the United States and Russia, and that we existed in cooperation and friendship thereafter. Atlantis, we have you on air to ground one through Milo. Okay, so you're loud and clear. Lanus, you are loud and clear on air to ground one. Let's go over and try uh, UHF only. Atlantis, unbelievable picture over Baja, California. Yeah, we had a beautiful pair pass there this time yesterday as well. Yeah, sorry, that, that, this loop is still a little bit broken. Copy. And uh, thank you, Atlantis, for bringing this picture to us.